Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Reactive Chemistry module. This is video number 11 and it's really a, um, I guess, more of a uh, review or some practice of balancing equations. So if you've been following all the different types of equations up to this point, you can skip this video. Um, but if you want a little bit more practice, then perhaps have a look at the examples on the next slide. Uh, see if you can do those yourself first and then have a look at the solutions as I work through them. So here's a series of equations and we just want to see if we can classify each of these equations and identify the products. So let's start with the first one. The first one uh, is a hydrocarbon, which means it's likely to be a fuel source. This particular fuel source is a um, hydrocarbon with six uh, carbons in it, so it's going to be a hex, and the relationship between the uh, carbons and the hydrogen suggests that it could be uh, hexene. Now, I can't tell you which carbon the double bond is uh, attached to because it doesn't tell me from its molecular formula, but that's not critical for us because uh, we're looking at the product. So let's assume that it's complete combustion and we're going to get carbon dioxide as one of our products, which means we're also going to get water as a product as well, and assuming that's a gas at the temperature at which this would occur. So I'm going to start with my carbons. I said I had six carbons, so I'm going to put a six in front of the CO2. There are 12 hydrogens, so I need a six in front of the H2O as well. So the six twos are 12, but that also means I'm going to have six oxygens. But here I'm going to have six times two, which is 12 oxygen. So 12 plus six gives me 18 oxygens altogether. And therefore, I'm going to need a nine in front of my O2 in order to balance this particular equation. This, of course, is an example of a combustion reaction. And the way that I have represented it, it's an example of complete combustion because of this product. In the second equation, we have a um, two solutions, two salts that are in aqueous form, so they've both been dissolved in water. This looks to me like a double dissolution reaction. So I'm just going to separate the positive ions, the sodium and the potassium, from the negative ions or anions, the nitrate and the sulfate. Oops, that will be a negative, not a positive. So a minus two. And then I'm just going to swap the cations over. So when I swap the cations over, the potassium comes out the front of the nitrate. And the barium will be out the front of the sulfate. Now, if you've started to have a look at some of these, you've probably recognized by now that all nitrates are soluble. So this is aqueous. And that means if this is going to be a precipitation reaction, then the barium sulfate is the precipitate precipitation. Of course, we want to make sure that it's all balanced. I can see straight away there's a 2K here. So I'm going to put a 2 at the front here. Now there's two NO3 groups here, and there's two NO3 groups here, and then nothing with the barium or the sulfate. So that's balanced as well. My third reaction is hydrogen gas and fluorine gas. So this to me, again, looks like I'm going to have um, two elements that are going to combine, in this case, to form hydrogen fluoride, HF. Uh, let's assume that that's a gas. And... Um, this means that I've got two separate reactants, only a single product. So this is a synthesis reaction. This is a reaction where I am putting two things together to form one more complex um, molecule. And of course, make sure I balance a two out the front of the HF to balance the two hydrogens and the two fluorines. My next reaction is just a single reactant. NaOH. So there must be something happening here. I must be um, breaking this compound up in some way. And when we break one compound or one substance into two uh, or more substances, that is a decomposition reaction. So we'll assume that this one is a decomposition. So if I've got a decomposition, then I'm probably going to form um, Na2O, which is the oxide of um, sodium and H2O. 
depending on the temperature at which this occurs, um, we'll just call uh, each of these solid and liquid at this point in time, just to make life easy for ourselves. Now I need to look at how what my ratios are here, and I can see that I've got two sodiums, I've got two oxygens, one here and one here, and I've got two hydrogens over here. So this one is also balanced, and it's an example of a decomposition reaction. Which brings me to my last one. And my last one is uh, HCl, which I know in solution is hydrochloric acid. KOH is a hydroxide, which is an alkali. It's a base that dissolves in water. So here I have an acid-base reaction. So when I react an acid plus a base, I get water and a salt. So the water is easy, H2O liquid. The salt, I'll have to again look at where my cations are and where my anions are. And when I swap those over, I'm going to find my salt is going to be KCl, which is potassium. Whoops, that certainly will not be a solid. It will be dissolved in the water, um, KCl. Just having a look at that and the equation is balanced. This is an acid base reaction. Hopefully you got them all right. If not, keep practicing. There's lots and lots of different types of chemical reactions that occur that we will continue to look at and practice as we work through this particular course. Um, but practice certainly does help to make some of these equations a little bit more comfortable for you when you're working through them. Thanks for watching.